Joshua was very keen to throw me off Baltron Tower and kept pestering me in every room. He wanted me and Piers to stop being an art partnership. He wanted to dump me and manage Piers. So what better way to lose me than chuck me out of an art show window? <coughs> right, Nicola, he'd say. Do you want to go off the balcony? He'd suggest while I looked over. Or the landing. It's quicker than the lift. Today we're celebrating the 20th anniversary of Fate Worse Than Death, so I'm here uh, for that and just exhibiting a painting in the gallery across the street there. It's the first time I've shown a painting in this area for 20 years. It's good to catch up with some old friends and uh, talk about uh, how things were 20 years ago. What's going on today is the 20th anniversary of a, a very important event. 20 years ago, a friend of mine who died called Joshua Compson and made this event called The Fate Worse Than Death. And the idea was to do a sort of traditional village fate, but it's a parody of it, it's supposed to be a joke. So what we've got is got artists here doing different, doing different services, doing white elephant stalls, tombolas, and it's like a fake jocular kind of event. But the real important thing behind it was that it basically it formulated this area. The whole reason why it's such a creative sector is because what Joshua did 20 years ago when he organised this fate and he brought all the artists and who were about to become the most important artists of their generation all came and worked in this area for free and were selling artworks for a pound which are now worth many thousands of pounds, for example like Damien Hirst paintings. But Joshua died before he himself became famous, he died at the age of 25 in 1996. And the point of this idea today is to raise money for Joshua's memorial in Hoxton Square and for everyone to have a great day out and remember what Joshua brought to this area and what an important cultural figure he was. I want to achieve um, a, form of, uh, a form of culture that can be already made, copied, understood and can become part and part of the process of life within all communities as opposed to wanting to encourage or help the dissemination of, of art objects or art as, as such in itself. Um, I'm much more interested in the idealization or the aestheticization of daily life than I am in the, the guarding of so-called critical high standards within the art establishment itself. My real test of uh, strength and virtue, my reward, will be if I can lever the general population towards a better understanding of that which is art and that which is not, not the art within the galleries, but the art that has become part of their lives better housing, better factories, better landscape, better Woolworths. That's briefly and crudely my, uh, my understanding of the question. Oh, it sounds, um, it sounds quite godlike. Not really. The most bizarre thing at all is when he died, we didn't realise that his gallery was full of dynamite. He'd been collecting dynamite to blow up all the public artworks in the area he didn't like. So when he died, it was the only gallery in England that has ever been taken down by the bomb squad. The bomb squad were called in. This entire area was shut off for two days whilst they took all the dynamite out of the gallery. He was planning up to blow up most of Shoreditch and Liverpool Street. He had the dynamite, but luckily he didn't find the detonators in time. Otherwise, he would have done it. Joshua's gallery was just around the corner, five minutes walk away. 20 years ago, there wasn't even a residence committee. No one lived here. Now you've got to get permission to do anything. 20 years ago, he didn't need permission. There was no cars on the road, no one lived there. I mean, this whole area then was quite rough. It was, it was quite a wasteland. I mean, you couldn't really walk around late at night or anything. And all the buildings were shut. Every single building here was shut down. It was empty, it was derelict. There'd been a huge property recession. And the only people who were renting properties in this area were artists. There were no cafes and bars around here. It was quite a rough area. And uh, Joshua's gallery was the only gallery in Shoreditch and since then it's all changed. Joshua was the start of bringing all the galleries and cafes and bars to this area. Now there's no artists left. 
And so this fate really is not just 20 years after Joshua's fate, but it's also a farewell to Shoreditch because the artists can't afford to be here anymore. Everyone's going. The creative community is leaving. And now it's time for the developers to move in and the bankers. And the site next to me now is about to be redeveloped into a hotel. So when these two buildings are gone, there'll be no artist run air spaces left in Shoreditch. This is the last space that's going. And once it's gone, it's finished. It's the end. So goodbye Shoreditch. Goodbye Hoxton. It's here amazing. I mean, I've, I've organised it with uh, two very good friends of mine, Alice Herrick and Sam Walker. I couldn't have done it without them, but most importantly, we couldn't do it without the IS. And uh, the IS are more important to this event than me organising it, because without the IS, there's nothing. They are the most important people. Uh, my name's Tom Spicer. I'm part of a collective called Light Eye Mind, and we offer hypnagogic experiences for people all across the world and then conversate with them and see where that goes. A few years ago, uh, one of my mates, Alex Nori, came across the machine at a festival, a psychedelic festival, and was really intrigued from the process and what happened. He then made contact with the guys that created the machine. Um, I think they created it on their PhD studies together into altered states of consciousness and near-death experiences and the white light at the end of the tunnel and what all that stuff means. We made contact with them as a bunch of artists and said that we want to put it into an arts context and explore what it means and where an artwork sits and how it's created. My work's abstract work. Uh, it's very large. Um, there's a lot of surface to my paintings. I work in a large studio in Poplar and uh, work on the paintings on the floor, mostly. Uh, and uh, there's many, many layers to the paintings. Um, and I do maybe two paintings a year. I work on each painting for quite a long time. What am I doing here? I mean, I, ca I came along and um, I, I started reading about this guy, Joshua Compton, and uh, Went, went along to a show in a chart gallery and uh, started talking with a few people there and um, they invited me along to do some kind of, you know, durational sort of performances, participatory kind of um, serious play. Um, people talk a lot about penises and phallic structures. It's a peripatetic practice and it kind of moves and moves and moves and changes and I, I, I make sculptures with the help of others. I make assisted ready-mades and uh, sort of recite poetry at times and uh, invite others to do so as well. Um, the work is whatever you want it to be, it's up to you. The only rule is there's no fixatives. The reaction's been amazing. Everyone's having a great day out. It's very, very busy. And we're expecting a few thousand, thousand more people to turn up this evening. So we've had about 2,000 here today and we're expecting another 2,000 to turn up in the evening. So it's been very, very busy. Really good. It's amazing. It's amazing. There's lots of great stuff happening. I've had quite a positive response. Most people have said that they like the painting. Uh, so that's nice. Fun, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're having a good time. That's what it's about. It's about fun. It's not, you know, you can, you can, it's like a, it's like you can think about art so much it becomes like a word that you say over and over again. So you say like uh, lemon, 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 it loses meaning. So when you stop thinking and start doing, uh, that's kind of my key, that's kind of my aim. Um, and uh, and that, that's, that I think is quite accessible to people when I say don't think about it, just do it man, like it's cool. Like just pretend that we're behind my granddad's chair and we're playing and that's it, and that's it. Joshua's mother's here, Joshua's sister's here, Joshua's aunt has flown in from Australia. They're all, everyone's happy. And all his friends are here, his school friends, so everyone's happy. So we got the thumbs up from the family, so it's, it's good.